after many times in the voting rounds, we're finally talking mental health on this edition of... Over the years, Trek has touched on mental health topics many times, with varying degrees of accuracy. This list is more subjective than most, so take it with a grain of salt. Starting at fifth worst, Season of Tragedy. Discovery Season 4 starts off with a bang as a main character watches his planet die. While this does give us a very long season of the recovery process, that's kind of the problem. For instance, the death of almost everyone Neelix held dear really worked as an event that built that character occasionally touched upon. This event fundamentally changed a very likable character and frankly took up too much of a 13-episode season's runtime. Number 4. Glimpses Through the Trunks Chakotay is unwittingly pulled into a species war against their hated nemesis when he crashes one of many shuttles. He thinks he's caught up in real conflict with no choice but to pick up a weapon or be nullified. But really, he's being groomed with the sight of atrocities in some kind of simulation, furthering him to join their cause. Not only is this a poorly written psychological thriller, it's one of many times through Trek where someone is right back at their post the next week after a major traumatic event. Number 3. PTSD. There's interesting relevant ways to handle PTSD. And then there's whatever happened with Detmer in Season 3 of Discovery. She hits her head upon a crash landing after coming across time, and it starts a mental and emotional uphill battle for the character going forward. There's weird misguided rage towards Stamets for seemingly no good reason, and in an all-better moment, she gains new confidence in herself on the bombing run on Osiris ship. Considering the bridge officers of Discovery get so little development, this wasn't a great use of time for a character I adore. Number 2. Cure All No matter your thoughts on the majority of the absolute insanity that is TOS's Whom Gods Destroy, there's a major mental health piece that doesn't make a lot of sense. The Enterprise is bringing a drug that will cure all mental illness to this Federation insane asylum, and it's shown to work on His Royal Highness Garth of Izar. Though in every iteration of Trek since, mental health problems are still an issue. And it feels cheap to think that a single formula can magically fix a person without any of the emotional and other supports people need. That brings us to the worst mental health episode in Trek. Honorable Death. The handling of Worf's Klingon brother Kern in DS9 Sons of Moog fails on pretty much every level. As a Klingon, Worf should have taken leave with his brother and just completed his request for an honorable death anywhere but the station. Even if you take the all life is sacred route on this, performing a lobotomy on someone without their consent so they can start a life as someone new feels ethically and morally questionable at best. Even just trying to get him to assimilate to life among non-Klingons through counseling would have been a much better ending to this story. As we segue into the best of mental health, please consider hitting like and subscribe if you enjoy this show. At fifth best, Broken Pieces. This is a condensed entry for every member of the cast of Picard. If it wasn't clear during the show's title sequence, this show's overarching theme is putting the broken pieces of people's lives back together. In Season 1, the crew find that most of the pain in their lives all stem from Commodore O and the Romulan Jot Vosh. In Season 2, we find out the secret from Picard's past that well explains why he's such a stern block of wood during TNG's first few seasons. A show where a character's mental health helps define them, rather than Disco's approach of beating you over the head with counseling. Number 4. Rude Awakenings Balana definitely has her ups and downs through Voyager, trying to find her place as a half-Klingon in mostly human society. She hits rock bottom in extreme risk, as she does death-defying programs on the holodeck with the safeties off. When Chakotay finally finds out what's going on, he takes a really unorthodox mental health move and forces her to confront her pain head-on in a simulation she created watching their Maquis compatriots die. For someone like Bolana, this is probably the best thing he could have done for her and is one of Chakotay's most useful things done in seven seasons. Number 3. The Most Suffering 
While O'Brien frequently finds himself in sticky situations that are no fault of his own, Hard Time is easily one of Trek's best thriller episodes. To see hard as nails O'Brien putting a phaser to his head is one of Trek's most humanizing moments in the entire franchise. Thankfully, he has a good friend like Julian to talk him down off the ledge and explain what really happened in the 20 years he experienced in his mind where he thought he killed his only friend. If the man who will always go with the flow as to not upset the balance can admit that he needs help, maybe there's hope to breaking down the stigma that's a barrier of entry for far too many in need of mental health treatment. Number 2. Polyphobic Reg Barkley has likely the most fleshed out and nuanced mental health challenges of any recurring Trek character. Starting by introducing us to a disorder that doesn't yet exist in Hall Addiction, when he pushes the ethical limits of what is appropriate to do with representations of people you work with, pushing all the way through the run of TNG and into several episodes of Voyager, Reg gives Deanna Troy her most interesting challenges of her career, and probably the best showing of her abilities. Dwight Schultz is an actor that can pull off pretty much any crazy thing you ask him to portray. Coming in at the best in mental health, number one, Soldier's Agony. When Nog loses his leg during the siege of AR-558, it sets up what we here at Botwat consider to be the best overall mental health episode in It's Only a Paper Moon. As Nog slides from PTSD to Hall Addiction, it does actually help him go a long way towards dealing with his new leg and fear that he's not as strong as he feels he needs to be to combat the Dominion. His unlikely counselor, Vic Fontaine, feels a lot like Guinan, always having just the right thing to say and doesn't mix words when Nog needs to hear some hard truths. The late, great Aaron Eisenberg would go on to touch the lives of many vets in the 2000s through this uncomfortable look at the damage that remains even after the wars are over. What's your favorite mental health moment in Trek?